Joining us now is Dr. Nicholas White. He is the winner of the Canada Gairdner Global Health Award and comes to us as a professor of tropical medicine from Mahidon University in Bangkok, Thailand. You're a long way from home. Yes, I am. Thank you for being here. You have, before we get into what you did and why you were awarded, I, I've got to, I've got to get the history down right here. You, you, obviously, you're from the UK. Yes. But you've spent the last 30 years living two months a year in the UK, teaching at Oxford. Yes. And 10 months in Thailand. Yes. How does that work exactly? Well, I think it works well. I, <laughs> I, I, my main, my job is as a professor of tropical medicine. So I, I conduct research in, into tropical diseases, mainly nasty infections. But for two months, I, I'm an ordinary hospital doctor in England. Do you still feel British? Yes, I do. I Even do. though you're in Thailand most of your life now. Yes, I'm very fond, obviously, of Thailand. Otherwise, I wouldn't have stayed there so long. And I, I really like being there, but I, I, I feel British. I'm afraid it's, uh, it's incurable. <laughs> well, welcome to the colonies. Thank you. Uh, I should say. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get into this. What did you win for? I won the Gardner Award for uh, research into a, a, a remarkable drug to treat malaria. It's it comes from a plant in, in China, a herb, a traditional Chinese medicine, in fact, and was discovered by the Chinese in the early 1970s. What's it called? In Chinese, it's called Jinghao Su, and we call it artemisinin. Uh, it's very, very rapidly acting, and it has very few side effects, and it, uh, it, it's become now the treatment of choice all over the world for malaria. How did we find out in the first place that it would have some kind of impact on malaria? Well, it, it, the story starts with, uh, with Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam mm -hmm. having a, a concern that his forces in the impending uh, conflict uh, in, the, in the late 1960s would have, prob would, be, uh, would have malaria, soldiers would have malaria. So he asked help from the Chinese and he asked Zhou Enlai. And Zhou Enlai uh, basically ordered scientists from many different parts of China to, tr to examine uh, existing treatments and to find new treatments for malaria. And this uh, part of this program led to a, a re-examination of the old traditional medicines. And some rather skillful chemistry and uh, laboratory work identified an extract of this plant and showed that it was, was working in, in, in the laboratory. And very quickly, they uh, went into uh, animal studies and humans and published all this in a remarkably brief paper of about six pages, uh, which I happened to read while I was working on the Thai-Cambodian border in uh, about 1980. Hmm. And it seemed remarkable. So I went to China uh, about in 1981, and the, I spoke with the Chinese scientists who'd done some of this work and was actually given uh, some samples. Uh, and at that time, uh, we were dissuaded from doing any more with them because the World Health Organization felt that the quality of the product uh, wouldn't be good enough and that they would produce a proper high quality product and we could evaluate that. Uh, but towards the end of the 1980s, the countries in Southeast Asia were having a real problem with malaria and particularly uh, that the malaria would not respond to the existing drugs. It was resistant. So they were forced to turn to these uh, Chinese medicines and I was part of that uh, uh, Exam early examination and we did the first studies in Africa and then started to uh, evaluate them in patients in Thailand. And have you been researching this plant all that time? All that time, Really, yes. for almost 30 years then? Yes, and, and then eventually um, we, we introduced the idea of, of combination treatment. Uh, we treat quite a few of the, infection, the important infections like tuberculosis and HIV AIDS with a mixture of drugs and so we introduced the idea of mixing the Chinese medicines with other anti-malarial drugs. And it's that combination treatment, which we call artemisinin combination treatment, or ACT, that's now recommended. So it's a cocktail in some respects yes, then? it's a cocktail. Huh. Do you know everything about the potential combinations of this drug that you need to know yet? Oh, no. Well, you, you ask a researcher whether we know everything that you need to know, and the answer is invariably no. <laughs> But we do know enough to know that they're, they're highly effective everywhere in the world, very safe, well tolerated. Um, and we also know that not enough people who need them get them. So I think uh, whilst there's a lot more to do in terms of the scientific discovery, we, the real challenge now is to get them out there to the people who need them. To treat malaria costs about one Canadian dollar or less. 
because most people who have malaria, or most people who are going to die from malaria are children, so the actual cost is much sm smaller. So it is indeed very frustrating that, that we still have a huge mortality. What about the logistics on all of this? I, I presume, given where it is, it's difficult to collect it, process it, turn it into something you know, that you could put in a bottle. And, uh, I, you know, is that the case? It's a plant, so it has to be sown and, and reaped and mm -hmm. extracted, yes. Uh, but it, it's, an annual, it's, a, it's an annual plant, so you, you have a two-year cycle. You plant one year and you harvest the next. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the main uh, impediment. I mean, there's enough capacity globally to, well, to produce mu much more than the world needs. Uh, so no, it, it's more a problem of distributing the drug in difficult parts of, of the tropical world. I mean, a lot of the uh, tropics, particularly in Africa, where most of the deaths from malaria occur, a lot of the countries are, 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 have conflict going on or, or there are difficult access. So, and that's where there's a lot of malaria. But is it the case that drug companies are not that interested in this because it's poor people that are getting this disease and they don't have money to pay for drugs? Yes and no. I think Big Pharma, the multinational pharmaceutical mm -hmm. industry, has in the past been disinterested in poor country diseases, poor people with poor with, with, uh, infectious diseases. Obviously, one, there's not going to be any profits made there. But I think in the last decade, there's been an increased awareness of, of global responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we do see uh, multinational pharma are dedicating a small part of their not inconsiderable resources towards, if you like, a loss the loss-making uh, mm -hmm. avenue of treating poor country diseases. I know, for example, two ex-U.S. presidents, you know, Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton, are both very heavily involved in, you know, trying to find cures for various diseases. Are they involved in this one at all? Well, the Clinton Foundation is very active in malaria, um, uh, and we. We have benefited recently from uh, quite a considerable increase in global awareness for in, uh, international health, and, and with that has come considerable increase in funding, although I'm not sure how long that's going to last given the current global economic downturn. So world leaders are, have you know, actually say the word malaria, and it comes up in, in G8 summit meetings and so on. Um, which is justified. I mean, there's a good, a good case to, uh, for saying that negative economic growth in Africa can be attributed entirely to malaria. So it actually makes economic, as well as humanitarian sense, to really have a go at this disease. It's and probably been it. so long since anybody in Canada had it, we may want to remind people how you get it in the first place. How is it contracted? It's um, a little parasite that's contracted by being bitten by an, a, a certain species of female mosquito, well, certain species of mosquito, and it's the female that bites. From the moment you're inoculated the mosquito, there's a, about a week in which you are perfectly well. Mm -hmm. And during that period of time, the parasites are actually developing in your liver. After about a week, they come out into the blood, but there's only a few of them, so you feel all right. So it's two weeks before you start to feel ill. And then the progression can be quite rapid. In a, it could take several days before death. Uh, but in some circumstances, particularly in children in, in endemic areas where malaria is common, uh, the child can be slightly ill in the morning and dead by the next morning. And it's basically organ shutdown. Yes, hmm. yes. You've, um, you've spent 30 years on this. And you could have spent 30 years on anything. Why this? It's a real challenge, malaria. But for the reasons you said earlier, um, the fact is it's tractable. I mean, you don't have malaria in Canada. You don't have malaria in the United States. You used to have a lot of malaria in the southern United States. So you can really do something about it. And uh, so I, it's a fascinating biological problem, but it, it's, it's tractable. So and before you're done, you'd like to see this cured? I would really like to see it cured. I, I mean, I believe that it's possible to eliminate malaria completely. From the world. From the world. Whether we have the uh, strength of purpose to do that, I doubt, unfortunately. We seem to have the strength of purpose to come out with some fake remedies. There's a big black market, I'm told, for, yes. for taking your product and abusing it somehow. Can you explain how that happens? Yes, uh, this is, well, to say it's unfortunate is mild. I mean, this is 
murder, basically. This is uh, people manufacturing um, something which is a counter, which looks like a genuine medicine, uh, and uh, distributing this, often in areas where it's uh, the most vulnerable people, the poorest people who have very little money, very little understanding of, what's, uh, of what is a, a quality product and what is not. Uh, so about 50%, we estimate, of all drugs in the marketplace, which is the main place people get drugs in the developing world, are either substandard, that means the quality isn't uh, as good as it should be, or, or just outright fakes. And, yeah. and one of the very distressing things is that the artemisinin uh, drugs have been targeted by the counterfeiters, uh, particularly the tablets. Um, and there were, I mean, in the past, uh, in Southeast Asia, there were places where nearly all the drug was simply was counterfeit. Uh, and this is, this is to kill somebody for about 50 cents profit. I mean, it's just uh, indescribable. So people are taking it, they think they're getting better, and it's having no impact at all. Yeah, and they definitely kill people. It's definitely kill Because uh, malaria, as we mentioned, it doesn't take very long. It takes a few days between feeling ill and dying. And if you, if you waste a couple of those days, it could be too late. Now, I guess you'd call this herbal medicine that, that we're looking at right now, right? Yes. I mean, that has a, a kind of a connotation in some Western, you know, mm. some parts of the Western world. But th does, does your getting this award lend a kind of a credence to herbal medicine that it maybe doesn't have in some circles right now? I, I, we can call it herbal medicine, but then uh, still quite a lot of the medicines that we use are herbal medicines. I mean, aspirin derives from the willow bark. The, 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 the drug that, is, that artemisinin is taking over from is, uh, is quinine, or maybe we say quinine. Quinine on the, here. Quinine yeah. on this <laughs> side of, of the pond. <laughs> but quinine comes from the bark of a Peruvian tree. Plants are complicated. They, they, the amount of, 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 the, of these ingredients that they produce vary. One, an interesting example comes from the, this drug artemisinin. So the, the seeds, uh, there was a famous uh, episode where the seeds of the plants in China were taken to the United States and, and sown along the, the banks of the Potomac River. The plant grew beautifully, um, but there's no drug in it. Take those seeds from, the, from the, the new plants on the Potomac River, take them back to, the, to where they came from in Asia, the drug is there. Hmm. So the environment was very important. Uh, but I, I think uh, the, the, the same scientific rigor has to be applied to develop to herbal medicine as any other medicine. It's medicine. Congratulations on getting what uh, I guess some people call the Baby Nobel, the Gardner Prize for Canada, and we're uh, grateful that you could spare some time for us here at TVO, Dr. White. It's good to meet you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.